Today in the Daily Dose, the Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment, a study in unethical medicine. From 1932 to 1972, the Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment was a study conducted by the U.S. Public Health Service designed to study and observe the natural progression of humans infected with untreated syphilis. Conducted entirely on poor, uneducated African-American men in and around Tuskegee, Alabama, the study was run in collaboration with Tuskegee University, then known as the Tuskegee Institute, which enrolled 600 African-American sharecroppers from Macon County, Alabama, including 399 men with latent syphilis and a control group of 201 men who were syphilis-free. As an incentive for participation in the study, the men were promised free medical care, but were deceived by the U.S. Public Health Service who disguised placebos, ineffective methods, and bogus diagnostic procedures as effective treatment options. The men who had syphilis were never informed about their diagnosis, despite the risk of infecting others, and they were never informed that the disease could lead to blindness deafness, mental illness, heart disease, bone deterioration, central nervous system failure, and death. Instead, the men were told they were being treated for bad blood, which was a southern colloquialism used to describe anemia and fatigue. After the introduction of penicillin in 1947, now the standard treatment for syphilis, none of the study participants were given the antibiotic while scientists further prevented study participants from accessing syphilis treatment programs available to other residents in Macon County. After the unethical study was exposed by Cub Associated Press reporter Gene Heller, the American public was outraged to learn about numerous syphilis-related deaths in the infected study group, along with 40 wives who contracted the disease and 19 children born with congenital syphilis. The egregious breach in ethical standards led to major changes in U.S. law and regulations concerning the protection of participants in clinical studies, as well as the establishment of the Office for Human Research Protection. So today America does remember the hundreds of men used in research without their knowledge and consent. We remember them and their family members, men who were poor and African American, Without resources and with few alternatives, they believed they had found hope when they were offered free medical care by the United States Public Health Service. They were betrayed. And there you have it. A bad 40 years for American medical ethics. Today on The Daily Dose, get your nerd on with The Daily Dose and learn something new every day. Subscribe to The Daily Dose on YouTube or sign up for emails at dailydosenow.com.